The first work is Shostakovich's Cello Concerto No. 1. It's in E-flat major. As I understand, he didn't believe that it makes sense to write a concerto for cello. He thought that this is not a great instrument for solo concerti. He found out how wrong he was when he heard a young cello player play a new composition by Prokofiev, which was premiered with huge success by a new name, Mstislav Rostropovich. Now this is a household name, then it was like an explosion. And he was so taken by that, Shostakovich, that he wrote a piece for him. And everybody has heard it in his life, will never forget. It's, you can't delete it from your memory anymore. The concerto is a contemporary concept of orchestra, which is a little bit different from normal concerti. So you have strings, some woodwinds. In the woodwinds, you have the clarinet who gets like an, a counter soloist. And then there are no brass players except one horn who is a real soloist on stage. And every time when the horn comes in, this instrument is trying to steal the show. It's just a new concept of unusual double or triple concerto. A big her heroic hero and his, his friend who lives with him and helps him in practical life. The second movement is like a scene, a lonely night of somebody talking to himself. Here is a melody which like a children's song. Yet it's of an intensity and depth which you can't match and you have to believe. And the soloist has to believe it. If you don't believe it, you should play it. Then the orchestra leaves the soloist alone in a cadenza, which is a full movement. There's four minutes of quiet, philosophical, deep music before it starts to go fast. And this last minute, just graphically speaking, takes more room than the four minutes before. There are a thousand notes in the second. And he, it bursts out and leads in the last movement. And this is like a typical Shostakovich dance. It's nasty music sometimes. It's really full of grim humor and full of virtuosity. The concerto was such an immediate success in 61 that it was played around the world in early times when the West was still reluctant to accept Shostakovich as a great composer. They often said, oh, he's composing for the party. He's composing simply, simple music for simple people in the party just to, be, to, to survive but far from that, very far. Deep misunderstanding. This is one of the greatest, deepest composers of the last century, and he wrote some of the greatest music written of all times. Beethoven, Symphony 3, E flat major. E flat major is commonly known, without too much talking about, in the classical times as a royal or imperial or heroic tonality. Beethoven, Third Symphony, the Emperor Concerto, but in magic flute, when the magic flute, Sarastro appears. He appears in a, in a cloth of E-flat major. All Mozart E-flat major pieces are like wine from one barrel. Goldman, very great. And it goes far until Richard Strauss, A Hero's Life. No coincidence, E-flat major. So the Eroica is Beethoven's, let's say, he hits the drum. One and two are fabulous symphonies, but with three, the lion opened his mouth for a huge roar. And it's until now a symphony out of competition. It was very daring for, for Beethoven. Anyhow, daring was his daily sport. So people didn't take it really well. They said, it's too long, you don't understand. He's so selfish with new turns, which nobody can understand. And one said, if you, if you find out the beauty of a movement, only when you later get the music and can read it, to understand what's going on, something is wrong. The composer should revisit his, his, somebody was talking about the last movement, which is variation on a, on a theme. So Beethoven did not really conquer the world with one symphony. But two years later, everybody started to understand that this was one of the great pieces. And the second movement, which is the world famous funeral march, to commemorate a grand man, 
tells us about the depth Beethoven had reached. He wrote this for a personality he incredibly admired. We all know that he was very much a fan of Bonaparte when he was a consul and he was, he thought, an elected representative of the people. We don't know what he did with the first page of the autograph because we don't have it. But there's a copy, first time copy, which was used for the print. And there was Bonaparte and he had a knife to scratch it through the paper scratch of the name. This is more than famous and sometimes people smile a little bit. It, it says much more. It says, a world was broken down for him. It's written for big orchestra, Sinfonia Grande. For a third horn, he mentions even that the first time in his orchestra he uses a third horn. So he meant this must be beyond. Now we have to play it, due to circumstances, with very little orchestra. So our heroic endeavor is to play it right. But we are really doing our best. It's like playing football or soccer with seven instead of eleven against of 11 enemies. We are doing our best and I think you enjoy it.